Hey guys, so today we are going to talk a little bit about how you can improve your skills and what type of projects you can get involved in in order to enhance those programming skills that you are that you're trying to hone. So let's get into it. Now this was actually a subscriber question the other day that I got and yeah, basically the question was, yeah, Frederick, do you have any suggestions on how I can improve my coding skills? And I'll give you a few tips on this because I think I have a few, few ones that may be obvious to some of you, but at the same time, I, I like to just put them out there, right? Let's just, let's just go through it, all right? So one of the first things that I suggest that you do as a junior, especially when you're just starting out, you're kind of learning things, you should get yourself weekend projects. Now, what do I mean by weekend projects? Well, I mean that weekend projects, is, like for me, a weekend project is just like, I'm playing around with something. A great example is when I wanted to learn Docker, for example, I spent a few weekends just playing around with some containers, setting things up, you know, just played around with it. I'm saying, like, like there's no goal with it, you're just, trying out the technology, reading up a bit and, you know, having some fun with it. That's it. But the thing here is that this little exercise and just playing around with, with something like Docker, for example, I, the goal is not to kind of to learn something to, to do it for as a job. It's more about just getting an, a, a holistic, like a high level understanding of the tool in question. Because the problem with weekend projects is that you do not get to use them in a real life situation. And you don't get the sort of understanding that you need in order to apply those skills later on in the, in the, work, in the workforce. It's something that I've been claiming is an, I like operations. Operations is a great example of where it doesn't matter how much you play around with it. I mean, you can get yourself a Amazon AVS account or a Google Cloud GCP account or something like that. And you can play around with your small containers and you can set up some stuff, but you can never understand how it is to actually work at scale or in a professional capacity. So what's vital is that you play around with the things that you may find interesting because it's gonna give you energy to, to keep on going. That's also very important. Don't try to force yourself to learn things that you're not that interested in. Not that in the beginning, because trust me, any exposure to development or anything of anything in IT basically is going to give you benefits. You're going to learn things just by being in that environment. So that's number one, weekend projects. Second thing I highly encourage you to do, because this person was asking me about open source and he was talking about that, that sort of thing. And I kind of, see the thing is, I'm sorry to say it, but if you are, unless you are either a genius who reads binary or you're a little bit more experienced, it's very tricky for you to, to get into open source and like contribute to these bigger projects. You can absolutely contribute in different ways. You can be engaged and read and all that good stuff. But my guess is that you want to code and that's what you should be doing, at least in the start. But honestly, once you get above a certain level, it's actually very beneficial for you to just read other people's code. I mean, I can relate to, an, I, or rather, I used to have this thing, which I did, like when I was a little bit more junior than I am right now, where I actually had issues understanding other people's software. And to some point, I still do. So it's something I'm trying to work on. So don't dismiss, like, Guys, reading other people's code is actually very useful for you to develop your skill set. So in the beginning, I suggest that you kind of, I mean, I'm not saying that you should go into, I don't know, like the Node.js core and start looking through that code or that level of software. It might be a little bit too complicated for you, but it's not a bad idea to just sit through some projects on GitHub and so forth and kind of look at things. A great example for those of you in front end, go to CodePen and check out other people's pens. Just what people made, like, because people make some, some pretty awesome stuff. And it's really useful for you to just sit there and in your own time, play around with whatever the people put up on their pens, right? 
It will help you understand CSS. It will help you understand JavaScript and all that good stuff. So that's also a pretty good tip. Finally, I'll give you the one that I think is the most important. And this is the one that I, promo I would say is, is the best, if there is such a thing. Get a real project. Start a company, start a startup, start something like that. What, what you're going for here is that you, you, you most likely should know somebody who has a, has a need for, say, a website or something of that nature. And the thing is that I've found it to be the best way to learn things, like properly learn things. Because the thing is that there's only so much that you can learn from just playing around with something. You, at some point, you're going to have to set the goal. Because honestly, the process, this process is actually more powerful than anything I've ever come, come by. Because when you don't have a goal with the project, you're just doing it for fun or you're just doing it for, you know, playing around a little bit. You're not forced to solve challenges that come with having a goal and that is like fairly tricky to achieve. So an example of this is, if you start a startup, for example, you are going to face issues along the way. And it's not always gonna be fun, it's not always gonna be easy, but it's going to be very beneficial for you to go through that process because when you're writing a Hello World application or a to-do application, you don't face any of these challenges. You don't have to make decisions that may be a compromise. A compromise. You don't have to, you don't have to, yeah, compromise is probably the best way to describe it. Because when you work at a real company on a real project, you can never write perfect software. And unless you are in such a context, it's very difficult for you to get to a point where, where you actually have to, put yourself in a situation where you have to solve a problem that you can't really solve in a nice way. And that's going to, trust me, it's going to give you enormous amounts of experience. Because that's what real life is about. That's what real software development is about. It's about understanding how to get around certain issues, how, what to do in what context and so forth. And these things happen very naturally when you work on a real project. So that's my biggest tip. Go out and find yourself a friend who needs a software developer, a programmer, someone who needs you to build something for them and build it for them. Go through that process. I can tell you what I did. I, by doing this, I've done it for a few friends. I learned basic design using artboards and like, because in the beginning, I, I mean, I, the first thing I made was absolute rubbish, like garbage, complete, complete garbage. I tried to write the code from scratch. Like I started, even before I had a design, like I started trying to code, code something together, showed it to my friend. He was, she, she wasn't all that happy with it. Then I tried again and again. And through that process, I learned things such as Sketch and Photoshop and how important having a good design and an artboard before time and all that good stuff was because I saved a lot of time and iteration. And yeah, I can only say that I had enormous amounts of, yeah, I, le I learned a lot from just doing it for real. And I mean, you can do this from day one, basically. You could, without almost any experience, just say, hey, I'm going to build my own blog if you want to start out light. It's even, in my experience, it's even better if you build it for somebody else. But start out there. Just say that, oh, my friend has need for a, website for his or her little small st small time company and then you take it on yourself to set that up for them that's it trust me doing that is going to teach you much more than most of like just doing weekend projects and stuff of that nature you should still do that just because it's fun but that's that's my biggest tip to you because oh and the best part is when you're done, even if you think that the project is garbage, if you have been able to take a project from nothing, delivered it and had a happy customer, if you will, quote unquote, that is something that's going to weigh very heavy on your CV. Trust me, a lot of these, like a lot of people will have a portfolio filled of these nothing projects that, I mean, it's great. They show off coding skills. But if, if you have a real project, trust me, that is a lot better than having a bunch of to-do apps. That's just from my experience anyway. Employers, 
are really impressed if you can show that you started you started a company or you ran a business successfully even at your beginner level because real stuff always weighs heavier than these nothing projects they're still good but that's at least from my experience so to summarize weekend projects awesome having a look at code pens and stuff of that nature to see how other people make these amazing things that you may not be able to do right now but by reading other people's code you will start to understand how they did it and how they think third start your own project get yourself a friend and build them applications or build them something that's my three tips have a great day